same time, I want to challenge you. If you go over to Psalms 119, verse 18, one of my greatest scriptures, one of my favorite scriptures. Open my eyes to see the wondering, wondrous things that are in your word, O oh God. I love that. I love the fact that he said, open my eyes to see the wondrous things. And not only in the word, but, but things that surround us, things that are in real life. What I'm sharing with you tonight came from a book. And you can throw that picture on there, please. That was written 130 years ago by a, name, uh, by a man named Russell Conwell. Listen to the story. Russell Herman Conwell was an American Baptist preacher. He was the pastor of Baptist Temple in Philadelphia. And the book became, this book became so popular to this day. It is a very popular book. The book became so popular that he raised, listen to this. He raised seven million dollars through this book and he founded Temple University in Philadelphia. That university stands today as a, result, as a result of one story that he told in this book that I'm going to share with you called Acres and Acres of Diamonds. It's a true story that he had heard, scripture please, of a farmer who had bought an old farm and vigorously worked it for many, many years, and he just had meager, skimpy earnings from his farm. Please hear me. He had an ox, an old plow, and he had a field and an old shack that his small family lived in. And they barely made it by scraping and uh, just get by, just making enough to live on year after year after year after year after year. One day a traveler came through and he told the old farmer about what was taking place in India. They had found diamond mines in India. They were picking diamonds out of water streams and men were going from poverty to wealth in moments, in seconds, in, in an instant. And the story so fascinated the old farmer that he decided to sell everything he had. He sold the old home. He sold the land that he, that he had. The field that he had plowed for years. The plow that he had. The ox. He kissed his wife goodbye and his children goodbye. And he said to them, when I return, I'll return as a wealthy man. And I'll come back and I'll get you. And he gave them just enough money to find themselves some little place. And off he went chasing diamonds. He went all over the world. Wherever he heard that there were diamond rushes taking place, he'd get there. He went to India and ultimately ended up in Spain. And he would try and find his fortune, this fortune seeker. He finally reached a point in Spain after much despair, after he had spent all his money, that he became so depressed, so discouraged, that he dove into a raging river and after drowning, they pulled his body out, chasing diamonds. The saddest and the true part of the story is the farmer who bought, now hear this, the farmer who bought his old place took the same plow and the same ox that he had used for years, the farmer plowed the same field that the old farmer had plowed, lived in the same shack on the same farm, and he was plowing in that field one day, and he noticed all, all, all of these black rocks. He picked one up and he said, according to his own words, that he looked and it looked like a rainbow was imprisoned inside this black rock because it sparkled in technicolor. He thought it was so unusual that he took it and he put it on this meager mantle over in this little country fireplace in the shack. And he set that black rock up on that mantle. And one day, one day the priest came by because he had heard that a new farmer had taken over the old farm. And as the priest was talking to him, he stopped in mid-sentence. 
And his eyes became fixed on that black rock on that mantle. Hear me now. So he asked the farmer, where'd you get that? And the farmer said, I got that out of the field. They're everywhere. And the priest said, I was a jeweler before I became a priest. And I know for certain that that is a diamond. You have to chip away, you have to shape it, you have to peel away at the outer cover, but inside of that black rock is a diamond. And you say you have more? Say, yes, sir. I sure do. So both the priest and the farmer go out and get down on their knees, and they start grabbing up these rocks. And amazingly, they found acres and acres of diamonds. This would become the world's most significant and largest diamond find, which is known as the De Beer Diamond Mines. For decades, De Beers has been the preeminent name in diamonds to this day. And it came, it came, it all came when a man had it all under his feet, didn't know what he had, let it go all, uh, uh, let it go to go all over the world to try and find what he had all the time right under his feet. That's right. Hear me, please. He never realized that he had been living on acres of diamonds. He never, he never, and, and this is the word, he never dug deep enough. So he never realized the potential of the place where he where he was. He thought that if he went to South Africa, if he went to Spain, if he went to India, if it's out there, what I'm looking for is out there or it's not there. When all the time there were acres of diamonds right under his own feet. And I see the story repeated again over and over and over again. Some people look at me now. Some people just don't realize the unsearchable riches of Christ that they have in their very hand. Right in this building tonight, right here, right now, you're searching and you're looking and you're chasing this and you're chasing that when you don't understand that in Christ Jesus, in the church, you can find acres and acres of diamonds. And you probably already caught on as to where I'm going with this. I see it all the time as a pastor. I see men who leave a good family, women who have a good man and good children because the world says that somewhere out there there's diamonds, somewhere out there there's somebody that will make you so fulfilled and will make you so happy not realizing that they have acres of diamonds right where they are and they go searching, they try this and they go and try that and the enemy wants you to be convinced that it's out there and not in here. And I'm telling you that right here, say right here. Right here. I'm telling you tonight that right here, right in this room, in Jesus Christ, in his word. That's why David said uh, in, in the psalm, open my eyes to see the wondrous things that are in your word, oh God. I don't want to go out there and look for the Lord. I want you to open my eyes so I can see the great things that are in your word. I've often wondered about the prodigal son. What was he thinking when he left his father's house? He had everything. And he took his inheritance. Somebody got in his head. Somebody came through and said, man, out there, they're having a good time, dude. They're living it up out there. It's out there. And you're really missing out. And he was in, he was in the father's house. The father's house. That person, whoever it was, had to get that thought in his mind. It's out there, dude. It's out there. It's not in here. And so he gathered his inheritance. You know the story. And he went out there to a foreign country. The Bible said he spent all he had chasing diamonds. If I get this, I'll be happy. If I get that, I'll be happy. If I achieve this, I'll be happy. But he ended up empty eating pig's food in that pig pen. One day in the midst of the swine's filth, he turns and he says, at least in my father's house, 
There's hired servants. I want to go back home. And when he got home, he discovered that there were acres of diamonds that he should have never left because the world will lie to you. Turn your neighbors. Are you hearing this? Do you have any idea how many times in over 35 years of ministry I've seen people lead good marriages, good families, chasing diamonds that became an old piece of coal, a vapor, a carbon, and look back and see those precious diamond children and that husband or that wife and think to themselves, oh God, I didn't know what I had when I had it. How foolish have I been? I know you've never done that, but I did. And you need to under understand, excuse me, that it takes time for a diamond to, to process. A diamond has its being because of intense heat and pressure. Hear me. Us Christians, we don't like to talk about pressure. We don't like to talk about trials and testings. And, but I'm here to tell you that without heat and pressure, it's just a piece of coal. But if that exact amount of heat and pressure are put on that old piece of coal, it burns the diamonds. And diamonds are formed far, far, far underground out of ordinary elements that are subjected to great heat and massive pressure over an extended period of time. Heat and pressure and time working together can transform even the most common material into something extraordinary. Turn to your neighbor and say, if you're going through something, don't worry, you're, out, you're about to come out of diamond. Right. Right. Come on, tell somebody, you're about to come out of diamond. You see, understand, look at me now, understand, coal is formed when partially decomposed wood or other plant matters combined with moisture in an airless environment under intense heat and pressure. And this process does not happen overnight, but requires centuries at times. Coal that remains in the earth long enough, thousands of years longer under continuous heat and pressure, eventually is transformed into a diamond. And understand that God won't allow you to go through more than you can bear. He won't put on you more than you can bear. If it's too much heat, it becomes carbon and it evaporates. If it's not enough heat, it remains cold and it's worthless and useless. But if it's got just enough pressure, that's why you need to understand that God knows how to birth a diamond in you. Hallelujah. Turn your neighbor and tell them you're coming out of diamond. Tell them. Don't turn from your trials. Some of you your your pastor, I, I feel like I'm in I, I feel like I'm in the fire. And you keep trying to jump out of the fire. And God says, No, no, I put you there. Don't worry. It's not gonna kill you. I put you there because I'm bringing that diamond out of you. He didn't take shot, right? Big shot. They don't make me go out of the fire. He stayed in the fire with them because he was forming three precious diamonds. God keeps you, putting you in there to form character, build character on the inside of you and you want to jump out of the fire. God puts you back in and you want to jump out. Just stay still. Let God, God, you're going to get fixed one way or another. Stay there and let God fix you and turn you into that diamond that he wants to turn you into. Amen. That's a good word. Pastor, what? Pray for me. Why? I'm really... <laughs> Going through the fire, go through you little diamond, you. <laughs> what? Different thinking. Yeah. But 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 man, this fire is getting intense. Yeah, man, and you're coming out of diamond. You're gonna come out sparkly. You're gonna come out shiny for the glory of God. But it feels like it's killing me. Oh, don't worry, it won't kill you. God said He wouldn't put more on you than you could bear. This just enough to shine you up, polish you up. God wants to show you off. God wants to show you off. Oh, we don't want to hear about trials. We, we, 
want to hear about tribulation. Why not? We have victory over them anyway. But because we have victory doesn't mean you're not going through them. The fact that you have victory says you're not going to get stuck there. You're going to go through. But in the through process, in the through process, that's the diamond process. In the through process is the diamond process. Oh, God, it should get quiet in this Pentecostal church. Don't run from your trials, for in your trials, you'll learn more. In your trials, you'll become more. You'll do more. God is putting the pressure and the heat on you so that he can bring the diamond in you forward. And so he said, I see acres of diamonds. Yes, those kids that get on your nerves, God sees acres of diamonds in them. I know that sometimes the marriage and the relationship is tough. And God says, don't go chasing something that you think is a diamond. Because you're going to find out that they get up just like your wife or your husband gets up. And no different. Why do you dig? Why don't you learn how to dig in your own backyard? Why are your people always wanting to leave their backyard and jump into somebody else's backyard and dig there? Why don't people learn how to dig in their own backyard? That farmer had all these diamonds right under his feet. The only problem was he never dug deep enough. And people who start digging never dig deep enough. And they think it's not there. But if you can learn how to dig deep, Why don't you dig in your own backyard? Well, people say that the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah, but when you get there, you still have to water it and mow it. Why not water and mow and fertilize your own yard? Get it as green as theirs. I'll tell you why. Because it... I don't want to say it because it's a four-letter word. Yeah. Come on. It's a four-letter word. Can I say it? Yes. Work. Yeah. Ooh, everybody went. You know why? Because it takes work. It takes work to dig deep. There were two men, a foolish man and a wise man. One built a house out of sand. He dug up a little sand. And the God said, that's a foolish man. He said, but the wise man dug deeper. And he built his house on a rock. And when the water came, the one that just dug a little bit, the sand, that house was washed away. He was foolish. But the wise man, when he built his house out of the rock that he dug deeper into, when the water left, his house was still standing. And God said, that's a wise man. The problem is, we don't know how to dig deep enough. We don't know how to be persistent. We don't know how to be determined in our faith and not to give up in our declarations of faith and not to give up on what God is, is, is promising, promising that we don't know how to stand anymore. We want Jack in the box. Blessings, I'll order it in this window. I'll pick it up at the other window. God says, no, I'm looking for a diamond. And I'm never going to find that diamond until I put you under some heat. I put you under some pressure. Look at your neighbor again and say, you're coming out of diamond. Yeah. <laughs> say it again. We need to learn how to dig in our own backyard. If the grass was greener on the other side, then learn how to fertilize your yard. Amen. Don't go jump in the fence always thinking it's out there. Dig in your own backyard. Some of you can't hold a job. Oh, good word. Some of you can't hold a job. Preach it, Pastor Charlie, because they ain't going to say nothing about you. <laughs> Some of you can't hold a job because you're always looking for that big miracle, the big deal. There's acres of diamonds in the job that you have now. If you want to learn to stay put and learn how to dig deep enough. Oh, help me preach, somebody. See, it's all in how you see it. Open my eyes to see the wondrous things. It's all in how you see it. That's why you have to pray. Open my eyes to opportunity. Say that. Open my eyes to Say it louder. Open my eyes to The only thing is that when opportunity comes, sometimes we don't recognize it because it comes with work. 
clothes on. knocks on the door because we're looking for that greener yard. Oh my God. Turn to somebody and say, he looked at you when he said that. <laughs> says, open my eyes to, to opportunity. Say that real loud. Open your eyes to opportunity. Now say, open my eyes to potential.
Turn to your neighbor and say, no, you're not. Turn to your another neighbor and say, never mind. There are acres of diamonds, but listen, listen, listen. If all you see is the glass half empty, you'll never see the potential and the possibility that God has put in the place where you are right now. We're living in spiritual poverty many times in the most of untold spiritual, in the midst of untold spiritual world. We are living in poverty and when that, that, that untold uh, spiritual wealth is right underneath our, uh, our feet in every church. There are acres of diamond in every single church. Well, I'm going over there because they, they prophesied so. You have the gift of prophecy. Why don't you do it? It's a gift. There's an office of a prophet. Not everybody works and walks in the office. But there's a gift of prophecy. Are you prophesying? Nobody answered. You don't have to go looking for them. You got that gift right inside you. Well, there's good preaching. Why aren't you preaching good? Come on, everybody. Look at me. Answer me. My job is to raise you up in the work of the ministry, yeah, not to work right. the ministry for you. That's and right. I want to know, why aren't you doing it? Why are you depending on these people up here to do it? Why aren't you doing it? There was a time that you drank milk, and rightfully so, but the Bible says many of you are old enough to be preaching. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you, sir. Not even going to pay you for that. Huh? You know, insecurity... Intimidation. It's okay. Those things are real. But if you dig deep enough, you'll start seeing that diamond on the inside of you. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a diamond. No, I said I can mean it. And I want to say to my pastors and my pastor's friend, I want to say this. Quit running from church to church to church looking for a diamond mine. Just take the bunch of coal that you've got. Apply enough fire of the Holy Ghost in your church. Enough pressure from the Word of God until your people become diamonds and your church will do amazing things. There's a marvel that takes place in America, follow me, where the Amazon River meets the Atlantic Ocean. Hmm. The Amazon River, the mightiest river in the world, where that cold, fresh water, fresh water of the Amazon meets that salt water of the Atlantic Ocean. There was a ship that was way out at sea, so far out that it couldn't see land. They were so far out at sea, and in great distress, the men were dying of thirst and dehydration. And they saw another ship finally in the horizon coming towards them. They, they got so excited. Now understand, this was back in the day when the only way they could communicate was with flags. From ship to ship. The men on the boat, where there was no water, took flags, got out on the deck of that boat. And started to uh, doing flag signals to the boat that could see him. And the signal said, give us water. And the guy on the other boat said, let down your bucket. Signally to one another. The thirsty men turned to each other in dismay and said they must not have understood. Climb up a little higher on that sail and make sure that he sees you clearly. So he does. He climbs up and he does the flag thing again saying, give us water. And the guy signals back, let down your bucket. Now the ship begins to pass them, and these men begin to realize we're going to die of thirst because it seems like they're not understanding us. Try it one more time. Give us water. The guy flies back, let down your bucket. <laughs> the thirsty man said, I don't understand what it means. But it's worth a try and he took a bucket and he dipped it in the water and he pulled it out of the water and took a drink and it was clear, fresh water because when the Amazon River flows into the Atlantic Ocean, it goes for 200 miles and that fresh water keeps the salt water down and there's nothing but fresh water. Let your bucket down right where you're at and see what that gives you all. We need water, let your bucket down. I need more of this, let your bucket down. Yes, right. 
That needs some more of that. Let your bucket down. Right where you're at. All the time when they were thirsty, they didn't understand that right beneath them was clear, fresh water. And I feel like saying to somebody who's dry and thirsty and who desperately needs life, if you would just let down your bucket right here, right now, you don't have to go uh, to another person. You don't have to chase another diamond. You don't have to go out into anything that the world says can fix your trouble. Right here in this room, there is a well of living water. His name is Jesus Christ. And if you just let down your bucket, there's acres of diamonds in Christ. I need somebody who believes what I'm preaching to stand up and give the Lord a great big praise. for your body, soul, and spirit is, is in Christ Jesus. There's acres of diamonds in Jesus chasing this, chasing that. What you need just, just to let your bucket down right where you're at. I'm glad for that thief that was hanging on the right side of Jesus. And Jesus was bleeding and dying. And the one on the left side looked at him and cursed him. He didn't see that he was acres of diamonds. He didn't see that he was the precious son of God. He didn't see it. But the thief on the other side, he said, what? Lord, open my eyes. And he said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, you remember me, Jesus. And Jesus said, this day, right where you're at, son, this day, you shall be with me in acres of diamonds. You'll, you'll have gold under your feet, son. You'll have gates of pearl. You'll live in paradise and forever with me. No, 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 no. They were both looking at the same Jesus. That's right. Yeah. They were both looking at the same thing. They were both going through the same trial. They were both going through the same suffering. And one of them cursed God, but the other one saw acres of diamond situation. What are you seeing in your circumstance? One of them cursed God, and the other one cursed the Son of God, and the other one saw acres of diamonds in the Son of God. Think it not strange, the Bible says. That when you go through fiery trials, think it not strange. Don't be caught by surprise. What's going on? God is going to bring the diamonds out. Don't be caught by surprise. Think, oh, pastor, the enemy's moving. The enemy's never stopped. Right. It's just that you've been so under the grace of God. He's never gotten to you in this way. But now God wanted to do something in your life. And he said, he said, remember, hey, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey sing. What? Have I ever introduced you to my boy Job? Yeah. Well, no. He's my main man, man. Job's my dog. He's my homie. You, 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 I've never introduced you say to Job? No. Go ahead. And do whatever you want to do. Joe, just don't kill him. But go ahead and do whatever you want to do. And we'll see how Job reacts. How are you going to react? You see, God, when he brought Job's name up to Satan, you know what he was doing? He was bragging on his boy. He was bragging on his boy. He was bragging on his homie. He said, you know what? If God has enough confidence in you to brag about you in the front, in front of Satan and make you that diamond. Oh, no. I don't want to go through it. We don't want to hear those messages. We just don't want to hear that. Diamonds. Say diamonds. diamonds. Say it again. Diamonds. Think you're not strange when you go through fiery trials. God's searching for his diamond. God's searching for somebody to brag on. I feel sorry for anyone who's like Demas. 
The Bible said that Demas forsook the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul said, Demon, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Having loved this present world, Demas forsook me and went after the world. He went chasing after diamonds. In ministry, we sit all the time. Think about it, folks. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you all right? Yeah. Can I finish this? Yeah. Think about it. Here's a man who was the greatest apostle who ever lived. And he heard that there was something out there that he couldn't find in God and in his kingdom. So he left the great apostle Paul chasing diamonds. He could have been the next Timothy. He could have written a book in the Bible. He could have become a great and immortal voice of the kingdom of God. But he started chasing diamonds. When he didn't understand that all the time there were acres of diamonds right where he was. Amen. Whitney Houston. And many like her. Chase died. <clears throat> many Christian artists have gone secular. Now there's nothing wrong with being secular. If you're strong enough for the gospel, you're going to go out there, you're not going to be sweet, but you're going to preach the gospel. <laughs> How else will the world know about Jesus unless somebody was out in town? But if you're not strong enough and it's not time, don't get ahead of God. And you're not grounded. And you look at somebody like Whitney Houston, raised in the church, but couldn't find. And I love Whitney Houston, I love her voice. But couldn't find diamonds where she was at. In the church! Somebody came along and said, hey, Whitney, what's better out there, man? You're going to make good money. Well, if I play for your church, how much will you, you pay me? <clears throat> You're going to make good money out there, Whitney, more than you will in the church. Look. Come on, Whitney, let's go. There's parties. You're going to make all kinds of money. Concerts in Vegas and, 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 and I believe that in her soul she struggled because she loved God. And then and, and, and she maybe she looked back at the charge and then wanted to go and then she looked back at the charge and wanted to go and she couldn't see diamonds but she saw diamonds over here. Let me tell you, be careful because there is such a thing as fool's gold. Yep. It looks just like real gold. You bite it. It's just as hard as real gold, but it ain't gold. And Whitney, God bless her heart, and many like her found out I should have never left. There were diamonds right where I was standing. I just did not dig deep enough. I'm saying to you today, there's hidden potential in your present job. Yes, there is. Because that man in the storybook, <laughs> the man in the storybook took the same plow. Did you hear me? The same ox. He worked the same <laughs> dirt. Lived in the same shack. And I'm telling somebody, somebody's going to take your same stuff that you're giving up on and they're going to get a miracle on what you should have gotten a miracle on. But you didn't dig deep enough and they did. They took what you left behind. They dug deep and they got the miracle you should have got. They got the breakthrough you should have got. They got the healing you should have got. But you went chasing diamonds because you didn't dig deep enough where you were at. It worked the same land that you worked. Why? Because they decided to see what God sees. They made up their mind to see what God sees and not to listen to, to live by what they see, but by what God sees. There's hidden potential. In the current relationship you're in, the current marriage that you're in, the current location that you live in, the answer to your dreams may be found at your fingertips. If only you believe it's possible. Before you make a big life change, you better take a care.
careful look around you because you may be sitting in acres of diamonds right now. You may go off and lose everything only to come back home tomorrow and find out everything I was looking for was right here in Jesus, in the kingdom, in my church. I heard the story of an old grandpa. His son and his grandson, listen to this. His son and his grandson would go deer hunting every year. They'd go to Michigan for trophy deer. They would drive hundreds of miles just to find that trophy deer. One year, old grandpa got too old, too weak and too feeble to go on the hunting trip. So heartbroken, he stayed home. The sons and the grandsons loaded up and packed up the camper and went and camped out for days. They hunted and hunted and hunted, but never found a trophy deer. While they were roughing out there, traveled hundreds of miles, old grandpa got up one morning, too short. He walked to the window looking out over the sink while he washed his hands. And out in his backyard walks a 12-point trophy. I'm going to adjust the story a little bit. Old Grandpa said, My Jehovah Jireh has provided. And he shot a 12 point buck right off his back porch. His boys and grandboys came home with no antlers, no trophies. And Grandpa was just sitting there with a smile on his face and a rack up on his fireplace saying, I want to. was right here in my own backyard. My blessing was right here, right under my feet. I didn't have to travel miles to look for it. It came looking for me. My blessing came looking for me. Why? Because I didn't give up digging. Listen. I just want to Decree to the devil tonight. I'm not missing anything out there that the world has to offer. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather be right here with God's people. Letting him shape us and mold us. I've got a purpose. I've got a destiny. And it's not out there in the world. It's right here. Right under my feet. Right where I am. And I want somebody who's glad that you find a treasure here in your church. For me, I'm dropping my bucket right here in this church, in this house. I'm dropping my bucket. I'm digging in my own backyard. And I decree and I declare that I will see diamonds right where I'm at. Boy, yeah, that's a good one. I'm not. This story, after this story, Russell Hornwell said this, your diamonds are not in far distant mountains or in yonder seas, your diamonds are in your own backyard if you but dig for them.
that I was about ready to give up years ago. I have diamonds in the grandchildren that I was about ready to give up years ago. I have diamonds in this church that I was about to give up years ago. All you got to do is dig. Dig with all your heart. Go through that stuff. God didn't take Daniel out of the lion's, lion's den. He stayed there. But watch him become a diamond. He didn't take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fire. He stayed in the fire with them and watched them as they became diamonds in the heat. Stay with your head. Let God do what he needs to do in your life. Don't be so quick to abandon all of that. It was never meant to take your life. God would not allow that. But he sees your potential. He sees that diamond on the inside of him. And the only way it's going to come out is through heat. a lot of people that say, well, you know, that makes me feel uncomfortable, yeah? Pressure makes me feel uncomfortable, too. But when I see what's going to come out of this, when I see, when I see what God's going to do, I'm not running. I'm going to stay right where I'm at. And I'm going to lay it when I finish. There's some of you that are really struggling right where you're at. Maybe you really don't have a full understanding of what's going on right where you're at. I think I've just helped you. Amen. You're right where you're at because God is writing about you. You're right where you're at because God is doing a great thing in you. Stop real close set business. It's not going to kill you. Oh, it'll stretch you. You'll have to sacrifice. You'll have to make some adjustments. You'll have to leave some places. You'll have to leave some people. Maybe it's not forever, but for that season that God is shaping, molding you in. And there's some of you that, that have said to yourself, well, you know, you know, I don't understand what's going on. I, I, I'm trying to fit in this room, and I'm trying to fit in this room, and I'm trying to fit in this camp. And I want to fit in that camp. I want to fit in that camp so bad. I've learned how to dress like them. I've learned how to talk to them, like them. I've learned their lingo. I comb my hair like them. And I don't know. I don't know why I don't fit in. What's wrong with me? Hear this. This is for somebody. God says, it's not you. It's me. I'm saving you for myself. I don't want you to go out there and be contaminated. You cannot be contaminated for the work that I'm going to do through you. But I, I need you to be that diamond so I'm keeping you away. So that I can polish you. And that I can shape you. And that I can mold you. Just let God be God. We're trying to play the part. You're not God. We're trying to be Medici and trying to fix everybody's world when you can't even fix your own world. Let God be God. There's greatness in you. And if you would just let, give God time enough to show you. That neighborhood that I started, that was in my world. The enemy would want to snuff me out through those days, but the grace of God kept me, and I'm still being polished. But I'm beginning to shine like I've never shined before. And I've got confidence enough that if the devil, if God brought my name up before the devil, I have enough confidence because I know Christ in me. Because I know Christ in me. I have enough confidence that I can take a licking and I'll keep on ticking. And God's going to be going for it.
going to stretch you, it's going to shake you, it's going to mold you, it's going to polish you up. It ain't going to kill you. Quit acting like you're dying. Quit calling everybody. Quit putting it on Facebook. All the prayer warriors that you pray for him. Why? Because God is polishing you up. Instagram, Twitter. Why? Because God is polishing you up. What do you want the prayer warriors to pray? God, stop doing it? Is that what you want? Smart prayer warrior that picks up on you and say, God finished what you gotta do. <laughs> God finished what you're doing. And let them shout it like they can to shout. I love you. I really felt I needed to encourage you this Are you hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? I said, Are you hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? And that's the attitude that you take after resurrection that we just celebrated. You cannot celebrate the resurrection of Christ and go back to living the way you did before the resurrection or the resurrection did not impact you at all. You got to start. <laughs> Some of you are really angry at me, but you got to start. You got to start letting God polish you up. You know, back me what you see what God is doing in your life. No thank you for this message for today. Love your pastor? Yes. Love him a lot? Yes. You're not going to kill him today? No. Okay. Good enough. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes to the wondrous things. How would you